The new concert film, U2 3D, and this is Jonathan Clark joined live in the studio by the director of the film, Catherine Owens, and uh, producer Peter Shapiro, who we know from the Jammy Awards. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to be here. And uh, welcome, Catherine. Thanks for coming by. Uh, So let me say right off the bat, you know, I've seen Woodstock. I've seen that a million times. I've seen uh, Song Remains the Same, obviously a million times. The Last Waltz, a trillion times. (laughs) <laughs> All great concert films and shot a long time ago. U2 3D, and I told Peter this when I saw him at the screening, it's the best concert film experience I've ever watched, ever. Wow. Are you getting that from people? Yeah, we, I mean, we're gonna. I'm glad you're saying that on the radio because we, we, earlier I think when you said that to me, I said we got to get you on the radio saying that. Yeah. So and, now we got it, <laughs> and here we go. And you know, and I've since then, whenever I play a U2 song, I'm like, all I can talk about is U2 3D because it's just unbelievable. So, are you hearing this from people as well? I mean, what's the band's reaction been like as well? Well, you know, we, you know. Well, first of all, I've just got to say, you know, this is all Peach Pero's fault. I mean, this is like this, this, this monster that we've given birth to. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very happy to be here with him in our town, New York, yeah. talking about this. But I, you know, we we jumped in on a dare. You know, as we do with you two on most projects. It's and, like, and, and what's your background with you two? You've you've been involved with them on other projects as well before this, right? Haven't you? Yeah. I'm their, I'm, uh, I provide visual content for their live shows since, uh, ooh, 1992, Zoo TV. Where, wow. Yeah, That's yeah. a big job, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. They're, they're, you know, they're a big group of people. But the, the, the uh, working on this project has really taken that relationship to a completely new high. I'm sure. So talk about the sort of genesis of this. And, and Peter, jump in here. Like, how did this all sort of come about? Well, we had uh, been working on developing this new technology. You know, people have known 3D for a while, but traditionally think of maybe the things that jump at you, the theme parks, the red and blue glasses. Right. And this is really a, a new way. It's really replicating how you see. You see with depth. So we really think 3D is maybe just not the right name. It's it's really replicating how you see. And now technology can enable you to do that. So when we were developing this technology, we, we, we knew w- w- nothing better to capture, to showcase it, than the greatest rock band on earth. In, right, in arguably the biggest, the greatest rock right. band on earth. Yeah. And, and Catherine, we, we came to Catherine, and I think it's a real credit to her, to her vision, who saw, you know, before really the technology was finished. We were just in the very early stages. The theaters, to show it, didn't even exist at this point. And, and Catherine had the, the foresight, I think, and, and the band had the trust in her that she was able to go to the band and, I think, say, this is something I think we should look at. Uh, so we entered into some test phases, uh, which is about almost three years ago now, and really led by Catherine was really the conduit. I think the band has, you know, the movie is the movie because of, of Catherine, I'll say, because she's not a traditional filmmaker, because she is the person who created a lot of the uh, material that you see in the show. A lot of the imagery, the art that's in the band show that's part of what they do in performance, by being the same person that created that and then make the film, I think it enabled you know the movie to be what it is today. Right. Mm. Adam likes to say, I twisted their arm, <laughs> <laughs> which well, is well, probably not too far from the truth. Well, 3D's been around forever. You, you wear the glasses and all, but I read that there are a lot of things about this film that are firsts. And you guys can talk about them. Like, first live action film to be shot, edited, directed, and shown entirely in 3D. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And in digital I mean, 3D. In digital 3D, right. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the appeals to us. I mean, we, we, I directed a video with you two the year before we started on this film where we did some motion capture and CG special effects. So we had a little dialogue going with the special effects already. And, and this, in a way, was a way of telling their, really showing their performance and telling their story in real time in a certain way, but more akin to virtual reality. I think this is probably one of the best examples of if you were, were going to imagine what virtual reality was going to be like. I think this film is is a good close. And first film, I think I have this right, to utilize all of the world's 3D cameras for one single project. So did you yeah. so, go I mean, around the world looking for every single 3D well, camera? Well, we got it all together. You can imagine at first we were like, you know, maybe we'll just shoot this in Los Angeles. Because right. a lot of the equipment's there, and the technicians are all specialists, and they're mostly based out there. And, of course, the band. 
uh, and, and it, in the end, in their wisdom, because it makes the movie, said, you know, we, we think we should shoot this in South America. Right. So, you know, that you can imagine our initial response, which was, Help. you know, you know big gulp, you know, <laughs> and the budget just changed immediately. But but the movie changed immediately. When you when you see the film, I think you'll see mm. the energy you get in, in, Brazil, in by shooting in South America in front of these crowds, 100,000 people in Buenos Aires. And uh, and we shot in some other countries through South America. These are people that, you know, they hadn't been there in eight years. And you can tell that these people were counting every minute till the oh band my, came yeah, back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Bono's thinking in particular is he feels like the Irish and South Americans have a lot in common. Oh, because, yeah. And, you know, he says we are really a South American country who just can't dance very well. <laughs> so that relationship is an important one for them. And we, we shot in Mexico City. We shot in Brazil and Chile and Argentina. And in each of those countries, the the crowds were just fantastic. And then we did some pickup shots later in Australia. And we're talking with Catherine Owens, the director of U2 3D and producer of the film, Peter Shapiro. So tell us why this 3D experience is different than, say, another film you might go see at an IMAX or something like that. Tell us what makes this different. Well, you're seeing U2 in front of 100,000 people in South America. But we, we, it is actually another first. It's the first 3D concert film. Right. So, you know, and, and again, it's utilizing this new technology, which really makes it much easier on the eyes. And I think Catherine's background, what I was saying before a little more on that, because she comes from an artistic background, she's an artist, a sculptor, and a painter, not a filmmaker. And, you know, you see on MTV, when you see DVDs now, it's cut so quickly. Boom, 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 boom. This film this- really breathes. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's, right. you know, it's just, mm-hmm. the pace of it is just so mm-hmm. easy to like sort of ingest and look at and enjoy really well and that was one of the issues at the beginning for the band i mean as much as bono was up for oh my god let's do it new technology you know we'll ours we can do all these fantastic things with it, it the you know the core the, the more cautious members of the band you know really took a good look at whether this kind of pacing which is a must for 3d would represent you two fully because they're used to a very different kind of pacing in in their DVDs. Right. So it was a a, a very developing that language and developing, and definitely my background in sculpture and drawing and painting helped develop that language of being able to be in a space with an image and have the, have the image speak to you. It really feels that way when you watch it too. It's just, like I said, it's just the pace of it. It's just... I don't want to say relaxing because their music is, you know, really rock and roll, but uh, it's it's just fantastic. How about the cameras, the 3D cameras? Are they like the size of this room? Because I know IMAX cameras are like huge. Yeah. What's the, like the technology of that? Are they just? Uh... I, I would say they're, you know, they're smaller than IMAX cameras, and that's one reason why we wanted to, we went into this direction because our background was doing IMAX, uh, but they're larger than, you know, a traditional camera. Each rig has two cameras in it. So with 3D, you're shooting for the left eye and the right eye. Wow. And with this new digital technology and software and engineering, you, the two cameras are now able to speak to one another, basically. So you can do zooms for the first time in 3D. Wow. Historically, the early 3D, the 50s, the red and blue anaglyph, the red and blue glasses, were two cameras fixed together. So you had no zooms. Right. Um, but, yeah, you know, the cameras certainly to be, you know, were not as, you know, simple as just pulling out a traditional yeah, yeah. film camera. Or even now you see, you know, music video shoots or, or DVDs are with ENG cameras. Yeah. And they're very, you know, pop them off and you, they're very rugged. So we had that real challenge, you know, A, going to South America with these huge crowds uh, and working really hand in hand with the band and their crew to kind of bring this film. We were uh, over, you know, 160 people. With our with our team, so you, we had to meld into you know the whole U two production. Yeah, they're sort of working touring sort mm-hmm. of production team, and mm-hmm. you know what's right. cool about this film? I mean, everyone always loves to see interviews with the band, but there are none in this film. But it doesn't matter. That was a concept that we decided upon early. Adam and myself were talking about that particular thing. And, well, they had already made Rattle and Hum, so they had gone down that road. There really isn't a concert film that is just pure performance. So, you know, in my desire to continually reduce things down to the element that really is the element that's going to speak to you, that was, we just felt the performance was that element. So let's just focus in a 